Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. I just realized that I have not talked about finding uh, the parameterization for the line of intersection between the two planes. So here we are, right? We have a problem here with two planes and we want to find the line intersection between those two. Okay, so uh, how do we know that the planes will intersect? We can actually simply just look at their normal vectors. So we can just look at the normal vectors, which is three, negative five, and one, and then the other one is one, negative two, and one, right? So you can see that those two vectors are not multiples of each other. That means the two planes are not parallel. In that case, um, they are going to intersect in a line, right? So um, how do we find this? We actually have uh, different ways of finding this. Um, I'm going to show you both ways in this case. So the one way is to actually just find the, uh, the two points on that line of intersection, and then we use those two points to find our direction vector. Okay, so here's one way that we can do it. So I'm just going to, let me just write this down. Let me just write this down right here. So this is approach... This is approach one. Okay. Now, how do we do it? Uh, first, we write down the two equations. We have the, um, we can treat it as a system of equations right here. 3x minus 5y plus z is equal to 4. And then that's equation one. The other one is x minus 2y. And then plus z is equal to 0, right? That's equation two. So what we can do is that we can just um, subtract the two equations. We take one minus the equation two. The left-hand side minus the left-hand side, the right-hand side minus the right-hand side, right? So we are going to get 2x and then uh, negative 5 minus negative 2. We get negative 3, right? Okay, so... That's a minus. So minus 3y, right? And then the z's will get canceled when you take z minus z. So we are going to get 4. Is that okay? So now what happens is that uh, we have an equation with just two unknowns. So all we need to do is to just stop plugging some numbers. We can let, we can let y be, um, let's just pick an easy number right here because uh, if we let y be 0, right, then you can see that we have 2x is equal to 4. So x is equal to, that gives us x is equal to 2, okay? And then once you figure out the 0 and the 2, you can actually plug it back into one of the equations, and then we can solve for z. So if we do that to the second equation, then we are going to be getting 2 minus 0 plus z is equal to 0. So that tells us z is equal to negative 2, as you can z see, right, by solving this z right here, moving the 2 over, so you get z equals negative 2. So one point that we are going to get, right, so one point, point, um, just, we can just call this uh, point A, right, there is no variable conflict, right? So I don't think so. So point A is what? It's 2, 0, and negative 2. So we get 2, 0, negative 2. Okay? So that's one point. Now, what about the other point? The other point is going to be... The other point is going to be just plugging in a different number in there, right? So if we do that... Let's try plugging in a different number. Uh, it would actually be a good idea to choose y to be a two. And then you may say, why not one? I mean, one works, but then if you put the one in here, you have to, you're gonna get a fraction for the x, even though that will still work, right? But if we can avoid, then we can just avoid for the ease of calculation. So we plug the two in there, that will turn this into an even number. And then in that case, we are not going to get a fraction. So from here, we get 2x minus 6, right? Because you plug the 2 into the y, you get 6 is equal to 4. So solving this equation, then we can actually get x to be uh, 5, right? Is that okay? Because you move the 6 over, you get 10. Divided by 2, you get the 5. And then um, plugging it back into the second equation, we can figure out what the z is, right? So equation 2 will actually give us uh, 5 minus 4 plus z is equal to 0. As you can see, I plug the 5 back into the x, and then I plug the 2 into the y, right? So in that case, you get min 5 minus 4. And then that's 1, right? So z is equal to like 1. So now the other point, the other point, point B, 
the other point, point B is going to be what? 5, 2, like the 1. Okay, so once we get those two points, we can actually find the direction vector. So how do we find the direction vector? It's basically just taking um, either point, right? Just subtract the other point. So you get 5 minus 2. So we're going to get 5 minus 2. Okay, and then we take 2 minus 0. Actually, I should highlight the color so that it's easier to see where things come from. So it would be a good idea to say that, okay, so this is our point A. And then the green one, the green one is our point B. Okay, so what do we do here? We are going to write 5 minus 2. Oh, actually, just let me use that color. 5 minus 2. Okay, and then the second component would be 2 minus 0. Okay, so 2 minus the 0. And then we get negative 1 minus negative 2. So negative 1 minus negative 2. So what do we get here? We are going to just do the computation right here. So 5 minus 2 is going to be a 3. We're going to get 2 here, and then we are going to get 1 here, right? Like the 1 plus 2. Like the 1 plus 2, we get the 1. So that's our direction vector. And basically, once we get this vector, then we are, um, you can say that we are basically done because we have a point here. We just need the point in the direction vector. So what do we get here? So the line, right? The line of intersection okay so the line of intersection for this one so how do we find this um, it's actually just r of t equals r naught plus t times v that okay so r naught is actually uh, one of the points on the line so it doesn't matter which one that you you are using here we would we, we just use the first point and then the v is actually the this direction vector so we just put them in so we are going to get two zero like the two plus t times that that v right three two one so our vector equation right so it would be two plus three t um two t right and then like the two plus t Right, because why do we get 2t here? Because that's a 0 here. So that's our final answer. Is that okay? Uh, now let's just look at approach 2. So um, I'm not going to show the whole process for the approach 2 because the whole process, the idea is actually the same. The, um, the, the key is to actually find the v, right? Then here's another way for finding the v because uh, once you find the v, this it's just going to be the same so okay so what do we do first we write down the two normal vectors from the planes right so we are going to get n1 from the first plane which is three like the five and then one right and then n2 is going to be one like the two and then one is that okay and then now the v is actually the cross product of those two normal vectors. And then you may say, uh, why do we have that, right? Why do we have that? Just imagine that if you have two planes right here, let's say, um, let's say one of them is in blue. So let's say you have a plane right here. Okay, so that's, um, that's plane one. And then you have another plane. Let's say it looks like this. Right? Do you see what's going on here? If we look at the blue plane, then the normal vector is going to point up like this. And then the uh, the red plane is going to be uh, facing this way. Do you see what's going on here? If we take their cross product, what happens is that we are going to get the vector that's pointing this way. So this is our V. Yeah, so that's the idea here. So that's why crossing them will actually give us a multiple of this one, or maybe the same one. Yeah, so if we do that, then what do we get here? Let's do the calculation here. We can 
we can actually just use that, right? So negative five times one, which is negative five minus, well, actually let's write it down. So negative five, and then what do we get here? Um, minus negative two, right? Plus two. And then don't forget that the middle component will have an extra minus sign in the front. So we'll just put the minus sign there and then put parentheses. So now we cross out the middle column. So we're going to get three times one is three minus one. Three minus one is two. So we get three minus one right here. Okay, let's continue. So what do we get in the last one? Cross out the last column. Then we get three times negative two is negative six. Negative six minus negative five. So plus five. So what do we get here? We get negative three, negative two, and then negative one. But don't you see that that's actually a multiple of the B, right? Yeah, so um, doesn't matter whether you use that one or use this one because it will just give you the same line, right? Because as the T varies, then doesn't matter as long as those two are multiples of each other. That okay, so that's it. I'm not going to show this whole process again, but if you, let's say if you just want an answer for this one, you are going to get a different looking one, which is two minus three T, uh, negative two T, and then uh, negative two minus T, right? So you are getting in a different looking answer, but it will just be the same line that you're getting. Okay, so that's it for this problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video.